Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at Binance and its stellar run and how we could have got onto that earlier. And not only that, I want to show you some other cryptocurrencies which look like they are breaking out as well. You know, we love the TA here, so make sure you join the channel. Now, before I get started, be sure to hit the like button, get that screaming in the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more like this trades on cryptocurrencies before they take off, not just talked about after they take off. Hit the subscribe and the bell notification icon so you get notified when the videos come out. Like I mentioned, it's very important to like up the videos, but here we're talking about Binance on March 31st. As you can see, I was super thrilled about this trade. And essentially, we were just looking at a breakout. So this is the first time we talked about it here. Uh, if you guys are interested, there is a link to Binance in the description down below where you can trade many, many cryptocurrencies on there. And then also for the Aussies, there is Swiftdex. So check this out. This is our portfolio. We're sitting at around $20,000 now, started at around 13,000. So this is almost purely a hodl. We're not trading this one too actively, but we are talking about trades today. And of course, Binance is that first one. So that's what you need to do here. Subscribe and hit the bell notification icon. So you see when these come up, then we resurfaced Binance just a few days later. But essentially, it's the breakout that we're looking for. Now, the breakout that we are checking on is here on the chart. And this is a very clean setup pattern that we've been watching for some time. Basically, it's a break of old highs. We were watching the volume increase as well. And then as it broke through all time highs, that was another go signal. So this is part of the trading, which we also talk about in the course. So this one here was alerted by my brother in the course, who's an active trader. Uh, Binance earlier on, this is all the little technical stuff that we see here in the charts and again, continue to follow it. So that's Binance, but let's have a look at it in the coin crypto market cap. We're currently sitting over $2 trillion. Binance, I think still has a long way to run. As I mentioned here, I think we're going to hit a thousand bucks on Binance sometime during this bull market. But my next target on Binance is at our 200%. So it's sitting up here at about $650, $660. This was the first target and we've hit that. Next one, slightly hit that as well. So around that 580, but this is the main one that I'm looking for here at around 660. Now, of course, as this trade continues on, it gets more and more risky. Looking at my target areas, they're only about 20% away, but from the breakout, this is about 100, 120%. So this is what we're looking for to get in earlier on these trends rather than discuss it at these highs. So like I said, I'll talk about another crypto in just a moment. But basically on the coin market cap, Binance, I still think has a fair bit of room to run. Even though everyone is raving on about Ethereum, how bad it is, and they're going to lose a whole lot of business once Cardano gets some smart contracts and Polkadot and they're all shifting across to Binance. Overall, Ethereum is still the safest bet. The most stuff is built on Ethereum, but of course, now that it is the safest bet, it doesn't get the largest gains. As we can see here, Binance last 24 hours, 22%, but in the last seven days, 64%. And then Ethereum, just a small 5% in our last week. Cardano is starting to make a small move again, so we'll look at that on the charts in just a moment. But onto Twitter, and if you guys aren't following, jump across to my Twitter now, talking about different videos that are coming up. So the next one I've got coming up is earning interest on your crypto. So if you've got questions, jump across to that. I'm going to make this video tomorrow for you guys. The fear and greed index is also important to have a look at while we're looking at these trades. And of course, a little bit of news. Fear and greed, we're at 74 at the moment, yesterday 76. So we're still sitting in those low to mid 70s. We haven't seen Bitcoin cross its all time high just yet, but we are seeing the Bitcoin dominance get destroyed. It's now sitting at about 55% on the chart and CMC tells us that it's around 54%. So thereabouts, we broke through that support and that's what we are looking for for an altcoin season. And funnily enough, sure enough, we have seen the altcoin start to move. Now, I want to make mention to, of this piece of news, HSBC bans MicroStrategy shares citing Bitcoin investment. So if you're unsure of the old, the, you know, the old banking system or the current banking system and what it means to get into cryptocurrency or at least have some exposure to it, this is one major reason why I think it's important to be in cryptocurrency as opposed, as opposed to just the traditional banking system. They hold your money, they have the rules, and if they want to ban you or stop you from doing something or close your accounts down, freeze your money, 
then they have control of it. Just like investing or putting your money into or your cryptocurrencies into a centralized cryptocurrency wallet app, they're regulated and they will do what they want to do. So that's always the risk of giving away your keys or giving away your power. So really important, check this out. Basically, HSBC has just banned people from trading micro strategies because they are exposed to Bitcoin. And of course, some of the banks don't like Bitcoin. Now I'm looking at this as well. So this is leading on into where we think the rest of this market cycle is going and the potential for some of these bigger uh, coins like Binance uh, in the smart contract space, how they are going to make it to these $1,000 targets or $2,000 targets. So we got here, Willy Woo doesn't think that Bitcoin will see a market cap under a trillion dollars. If you don't know who Willy Woo is, he's on Twitter, a very prominent figure over there talking about Bitcoin a lot with a lot of these models that you might see come up. So he's talking here that probably Bitcoin won't go under the trillion dollar market cap. It'd have to pass through $53,000, 53 and a half thousand for it to go under the trillion dollar market cap. So it looks like we are finding some sort of stability at these areas before we take off. In terms of the price of Bitcoin, uh, here's another one from Willie talking about it surpassing 2 million per coin. I don't think this is going to happen in this cycle, but if we were to get a $200,000 Bitcoin, that's about three times from where we are now. We're at about 60,000, so 120, 180, you know, two and a half, three times, something like that to get to our 200,000, which would set us at about a three or four trillion dollar market cap for Bitcoin. That means we would probably see Ethereum somewhere around a trillion. And if Binance continues its stellar run to continue to catch up to Ethereum, we could very well see Binance getting closer to a trillion dollars, probably somewhere around that half trillion thereabouts. But I definitely think we're going to see Binance over a thousand dollar coin. Saying that now, it's not such a big gain, but still something that is quite a significant level that people will be looking for that next top 10 that passes the four figure level. So Binance is, there's a lot there to allow these markets to continue moving up. Cardano as well, Cardano price prediction, why Cardano could be one of the winners of 2021. Uh, another strong article here for Cardano. We're just starting to see Cardano break through at about $1.30. We've been sitting around that $1.10 through to $1.30 for some time and currently at $1.32. So it looks like it is consolidating at these high levels above a dollar, which is a good sign. We didn't want to see it break down, but if it did, we had some of that dry cash on the side, ready to scoop it up. But essentially this here is talking about Cardano flirting with the Ethiopian government for the world's biggest blockchain project. So about Cardano getting into Africa and all of the partnerships that that's going to bring over there. The news is important. Chart is more important because we're going to see it happen over on the chart first, which leads me to the chart. Now, Binance, like, a, like we've just looked at, in terms of how far this has got to go, in my opinion, of course, uh, I see this as the risk just getting out of my favor. Now, we're at around 20% off. The downside to Binance could be quite significant. Just looking back at history, let's throw this on a log, then we see 83% drops, 84% drops. This, of course, is in a bear market. This, of course, is in a bear market as well. So in a bull market, we haven't really seen what Binance is capable of, what levels it can hold. The only piece we have to work with is uh, a few weeks ago when Binance screamed from around $40 or $50 up to about $350. Now that move was about 40 odd percent, sort of around 45%. So keep that in mind if you're looking to trade these areas, because if this happens to be the top, maybe it is, maybe it's not, then I would just work down 45% and see where that lands me. This is a pretty good level. It will come out at old resistance and this could become support. So that is one uh, area that I'd be looking for some sort of support if Binance was to break down from here. I'm not sure whether it will just yet. I don't have any signs to say it is breaking down just yet, but I'm always on the lookout to understand my risk versus reward because if you're trying to trade cryptocurrencies and you're getting in at the end of these massive pumps, then you are really throwing a lot of cash at these projects at very high risk levels. And just looking at dollar values going from 500 to 600 isn't that much. It's only about 20%. But in terms of a dollar for the, the new trader, it always sounds like it's fantastic money. But just look at everything in terms of percentages and you'll do yourself 
a hell of a lot of favors. Binance on Bitcoin, again, is getting close to 161% level. That comes out at 0.01 of a Bitcoin. So keep an eye on the rest of these charts. And uh, the other thing I've got here is time frames. This was a clean 92 weeks up, 90 weeks down. Very nice balancing in time for Binance. So I've looked at the USD, looked at Ethereum, looked at BTC. Now, let's have a look at Cardano before we move on. And Cardano dot is still just trending in this mushy area. Not much is going on. We are seeing high lows, high highs. So Cardano is outperforming dot, but we really want to understand Cardano, Binance and Bitcoin and Ethereum and the dollar. So this was the much <laughs> a much better project to be investing in instead of Cardano, unfortunately, for ADA holders. But you just don't know. This is all hindsight. It's so much easier to look at it in hindsight. I think this is probably getting a little bit oversold at this point. We are reaching these low levels once again. So this all just feeds back into the potential of Binance being overbought. So this is why I add all of these extra charts to have a look at, just to give me some sort of perspective across the market to see whether the trend is going to stay with the ones that we're looking at, in this case Binance, or if the trend is about to shift. And if it's getting very overextended, doesn't mean it can't keep going, but it's just building the case to say, maybe the risk is getting a little bit high here. So Cardano BTC, now it's continued to consolidate. We saw a huge fall, about 50% on Cardano, 45% from the tops to this current low, but it is consolidating above old highs. That's a very good sign. Cardano Ethereum, again, big fall. Looks like it's consolidating at this point, but we definitely want to start to see a little bit of a move up to confirm the consolidation. Otherwise, if we get a breakdown from here, then we end up in this zone again, and it would be better to be buying Ethereum rather than Cardano. But for now, looking all right. And the last chart I want to have a look at on Cardano is against the US dollar, which is beginning to climb slowly. That's a good thing. We've started, we've seen it on Ethereum and the market continues to climb. So Cardano is also looking pretty decent. Uh, it seems like the narrative is definitely shifting across back to smart contracts, especially with a lot of these hard forks coming up, improvements on the blockchain and partnerships forming. The other crypto I wanted to have a look at, EOS. Now, EOS was something that I remember buying a long time ago, 2017, 50, 70 cents. And I got pretty, I sold out pretty well around these 21. Yes, it was up really high and then on the way down as well, just as some confirmation. But I ended up holding a lot of this as well and sold out in this area. So now I'm looking for a re-entry and this has just broken out of some old high levels. So it does look like the narrative is shifting back towards smart contracts. That's what I'm seeing here on EOS. Now I want to definitely check EOS BTC and this is finding some resistance at an old level. So we want to see it break above 12,000 Satoshis and that's going to give us some confirmation that this trend is likely to continue in the bull market direction, in the up direction, north. So this is the next piece of the puzzle for me on EOS. But as you can see, these are these super low suppressed destroyed areas that we generally see before nice big pumps. The only downside to this is it's an old cryptocurrency and it has some other levels going on from 2018, which some people may still want to sell out at. So it has history and with history, it's just a lot harder to push through these levels. Having said that, we've seen it happen on Bitcoin and it's sliced through some of these old levels because sometimes we get the old bag holders selling off their tokens on the way down because they are scared and they just don't want it anymore and they leave the market. And then once this accumulation period has ended, that's when we start to head up again. So EOS is definitely on my radar, especially just for a trade uh, as I see these sort of accumulation areas, good signs, especially if they break out and that's the signal to be getting in. Now you've got to figure out where your exit points are. So if you want to know more about that, you know what to do, hit the subscribe button, but also come and join us in the Investor Accelerator. I've looked at that before uh, over here in the Investor Accelerator. There's a link to this in the description down below. So come over, join us there. We'll talk about these trades, entries, and looking at how to exit them. So that's it over there on uh, Facebook. Binance is what we have touched on as well, because that is looking like maybe we're getting towards the end of it, but definitely do your own research, have your plan in uh, before you trade anything. That's about all I've got for you today, guys. That was the news, that was Binance, definitely on our path to 1,000 sometime in the near future. And of course, Cardano, 
uh, also looking like it is setting up. So let's keep an eye on that one as well on the channel. Hit the subscribe button, bell notification icon, like the video up, does a lot and helps us out in the YouTube algorithm. I'll catch you guys at the next video or on Twitter. Make sure you join me over there. There's a lot going on. Otherwise, I'll see you on Instagram Q&A. Until next time, have more fun to get more done.